Hey guys, welcome to the second ever Paznia Segralm Assembly, hosted live here in the Paznia Committee of Correspondence Telegram, the official chat of the Free Republic. Keep up to date with happenings, just visit t.me forward slash Paznia chat. For the purposes of transparency and inclusion, this will also be recorded and released on the various Bonnie podcast feeds. But obviously, Telegram is totally public, so as always, please do keep relevant security culture and privacy concerns in mind. Regardless, thank you so much for being here today. This discussion was sparked by the most recent release, TVP number 171, titled Community as an Essence with Rex. A Rex is Paznia esque project, vision, philosophies, and ideas. Spark further discussion in this chat, uh, which brings us all here today. If you haven't already, make sure to check that episode out. It's at bonniepodcast.com forward slash 171, or you can find it on Fascist Tube or Odyssey. So I'm going to introduce Paznia real quick for those who may be new. The Free Republic of Paznia, PAZ, stands for Permanent Autonomous Zones, which are essentially just pockets of freedom where we can you know, be free and have our autonomy. So the idea of Paznia is a decentralized network of these permanent autonomous zones, uh, whether they're self-sufficient homesteads, safe places for people to city park in a van, and maybe a, a self-sustainable greenhouse, like uh, what Rex is talking about. Places where we can you know, be free and have our autonomy. That's the, that's the idea. At Current, uh, we just started putting together the map and the directory, which is only for vetted Paznians. You gotta know who you work with. That's one way to forego a lot of conflict into the origin in the future. For more information, just visit Paznia.com. There's a lot of stuff on there. Paznia.com is great to The attractive thing about Vanu to me, and I know we're, I guess, cross-breeding Vanu with the Second Realm, I would argue that the Second Realm is going to require some Vanuans to discipline themselves and achieve some high MTHs to secure various natures of what will be required to establish something meaningful. I guess one thing I'm always reminded of or always thinking about is the coercion and that MTH and and how to keep that in mind. Uh, it's the mean time to harassment mentioned by Rayo, published by Rayo Squared. So the mean time to harass is an algorithm that, R- that Rayo came up with to calculate how much invulnerability to coercion you've achieved. What Chief chimed in with, the root of the problem, yeah, the land patents and all that, that's good information. You might be able to slow them down and make it look good on paper, but I want to thoroughly remind everybody that it's not like a magic wall that's created by a piece of paper that it actually means anything to uh, a group of organized criminals. If that land ever gains attention from the bludge, the pieces of paper aren't going to mean much. So I just wanted to put that out there and as my considerations when longevity and effectiveness of an organization like you're describing, can it also be invulnerable to that harassment? That's how I like to think about it. The uh, first principles thinking, that's what came up with me, even without any laws. There's times when someone will go to a restaurant and they'll have a bad experience and they won't go back. If we were a police officer and we went to a community and it felt very vulnerable for us to be in there because there was only one entrance and we drive in with our police car and there's only one way in and out. And now you've got 30 people staring at you and you're one police officer in there and you're trying to deliver a message or talk to someone or tell them that they need to get a septic system or whatever, whatever you're going to try and do to harass them. You're walking into a very vulnerable situation and you're going to try and harass somebody. It's got to feel bad. I can just imagine like what I would feel like walking in there and you don't know whether they got guns. You don't know what they're going to do. Maybe everyone just walks out, they strip down butt naked and they walk out and walk toward him. That would be weird, wouldn't it? Weird and uncomfortable. If it turns out to be a bad experience, you might not go back there, even if your police chief tells you to, even if you're supposed to, even if you have to lie and say you went and they told you no. Whatever you're going to fucking do, if it's bad enough and nothing has to be illegal for it to be bad, just like there's nothing illegal that happened in that restaurant that made you hate it and never want to go back. Maybe you had a bad piece of ham. Maybe the the waiter was having a bad day. Maybe uh, whatever happened. But you freak the fuck out in the restaurant and the owner comes over and they're like, what the hell, you know? And no matter how it goes down, even if you're the one that says all the mean words and have the last word. And you stomp out of there. Oh, I showed them. I showed them. But do you go back to that restaurant? No. Why would you go back? Oh, I have a right to be back at that restaurant. Even during the mask pandemia shit. You go into a place and they harass you enough about your mask. You could go to Walmart instead where they don't harass you. (laughs) So although you might think the law's on my side, I'm the one that's right, I ha- I got the last word, like blah, blah, blah. You could still end up with a feeling of negative karma, negative feelings, negative experience, and choose to never go back there. That's my vision for 
a police officer that shouldn't be there. I'm not talking about anyone does anything illegal if we care about laws. I don't think laws are important. I think doing what's right is important, but I don't think laws are important. So who cares about laws? But it would be wrong for us to say, oh, you're on our land. We have a right to shoot you. We're going to shoot you. That would be wrong. But, you know, pissing on the guy, fucking throwing shit at him, that's not wrong. That's fucking, he's in the wrong place. Why is he even there? Maybe he'll have a bad time and he'll leave. So that's the, that's the way I think about it. But it could get worse, could escalate or whatever. But another way to resolve differences is you take their time, they take your time. We're going to both go sit down and we're going to have a discussion and we're going to resolve this. And if I'm willing to spend 50 hours sitting on my ass in a chair in a meeting room, filibuster style then he's got to be willing to do the same thing. Whoever leaves first loses. Okay, no one's harmed. Nothing wrong happens. Everything's great. We all get our differences handled. And uh, it, no one he had to even get, you know, pissed on. And there's different options for this to happen, but you have to be willing and you have to have kind of a group because if you're by yourself and you're not willing, then you get to be a slave or you get to die. You get two choices at that point. But if you join a group that agrees with you and you're willing to add to that group, you're willing to participate in that protection union, then you have a third option. But most of us are sitting with two options, obey or choose to not live in this world anymore. I mean, there's a third option, which is the right option. The right option is do whatever the hell you want. That's the right option. But some of us have a little bit of like forethought in our actions. When we get thinking about what the consequences could be of our actions, then, uh, we might realize that you've got two options at that point. But if, if you use your third option, that's the best option. You should just do that. So when I thought through what types of organizations don't need to be registered to, to have legitimacy, I thought, what type of organization do we as the general populace consider to be a legitimate, valid organization, even if, and I'm using these words loosely from my own vocabulary, not from a dictionary, but what kind of organizations don't need to be registered to be real and valid for people to say, oh no, that's a real organization. Well, gangs don't. I mean, I wonder why they don't have to be registered. I don't know. Probably because what they're up to is against the law. So no, they would get their registration pulled. They would get their license pulled for whatever they're trying to do. So that's understandable. The type of business that they're in makes it so they can't be registered. Okay, fine. I guess that's what's happening with me too. I want to be in a business that's durable and scalable and lasts a long time and does a lot of good for a long time and can't be shut down by evil bureaucrats. Mine, it lands in the same place. I don't want it to be registered, but uh, it's different. What I'm trying to do is good and what the gangs try to do might not be good, right? We associate gangs with nefarious activity and uh, negative results. We also have another one, mafia. A mafia, you could say it needs to be registered, but I would probably say from the way I was raised, I thought mafias didn't need to be registered, but they could still be viewed as a legitimate organization that you should really, you know, if you just want to believe that the Bloods and the Crips don't exist, fine, but it's at your peril, right? So what is it that gives them their legitimacy? Without permission, without a government, what gives them legitimacy? It's the fact that they can hold their own, the fact that they can enforce their contracts without paper, without courts, they can still enforce their contracts. And then I realized maybe, maybe a union, like a, an employment union, workers union, they might not be registered either because a lot of times there's so much political corruption when there's a big business that it would be helpful if there was a union for those workers, but the big business doesn't want the union. Well, the big business has deep pockets and probably has politicians. So that's another type of organization that I don't know if they're registered. I think most of them are registered. So most of them could get their license pulled or their permit removed or their registration revoked. I think that's how it is nowadays, but I could see why they might be unregistered, not registered, okay? And then that's where we got some other examples from Chris, like a township or an unregistered, unincorporated location could also be, no one had to ask permission to make it happen. So anyway, I think that the, the kindest, most accurate term is protection union. I coined it myself, but that's basically what it is. And, and it's not like an organization, one organization. It's 
a concept, like when I say a church, you know, there's not one church, but a church, a protection union is a concept that not a bad strategy. That's why, because your protection union could help you. They could get you out of jail if you get put in jail. If police officers want to pull you over, you could get your buddies and go pull the police officer over when he's off the clock. You know, I don't want to pull him over when he's on the clock. He's getting paid. He pulled me over when I wasn't getting paid. I want a level playing field. I don't need a million dollars from the county by suing him for putting me in jail. I want to go take his ass and put it in our custody, put it in jail. Why? Level playing field is better because the people that play the game on the corporate side have unlimited money. They have deep pockets. They're getting paid to do what they do to harass people. It's not going to work to just fight them in court and win. I don't think personally that's the way to go because I think that's their game and that's them playing it and them making the rules. I think if it's going to be fair, they made a game, they made the rules, they conscripted me into following their rules and playing their game. I make a game, I make the rules, I conscript them into following my rules, level playing field. And it's probably time that we do that as people of the world. And I welcome other people thinking on how to make that happen, but I'm pro level playing field. So I was going to mention just real quickly, this has come up in the Pasnia chat before. I did a Building the Second Realm series on uh, the Vanya podcast, and one of those episodes was Lessons from Organized Crime. In the book, Second Realm Book on Strategy, there is a chapter, Smuggler and XYZ say, quote, the Mafia as an example is primarily a loose knit network of independent gangs that pay tribute to their dons and receive protection in their own conflict resolution system in return. Their aim is to limit conflict within groups and not resort to violence when other means of conflict res- resolution are available. They operate their own title system of territories and markets. They provide services for communication and reputation, and they foster the division of labor through specialization. One could define the mafia as an organized crime business association based on a shared ethical background. So obviously they provide the disclaimer. They don't participate in the most ethical behaviors a lot of times. But as far as the strategies, we can learn from them and apply them as we can to the positive per se. So definitely aren't the first one to make that comparison. 